So everyone keeps asking me what tools I use as a design engineer to design and build my landings and components and web apps. In this video, I want to talk about all the tools that I use to build things from the ground up, to add components onto Eternity UI and to generally deliver client work, what tools I've been using and what tools look promising for the future and what tools actually help me deliver and ship faster. Now, before I start the video, I want to set things clear. Tools are just a part of your process. It's the processes that you have in place that you can essentially follow to ship faster tools can only help you if they are not posing as a hindrance into your journey use tools wisely do not use 100 tools for the same job pick your tools very specifically and stick to them for the longer time that way you'll be able to ship faster and you'll be able to move faster as the design industry grows so the first tool that i use is and i use it rarely but i still use it it's called figma i'm sure you're familiar with it figma is something that i've been using for quite a long time now this is the landing page but i want to show you my figma file that i use i'll go to figma i'll try opening it here i'll show you the figma file that I have and I do everything into one file only. I do not complicate it. I keep it really simple. So you see, this is what I have. For example, these are the thumbnails for my portfolio templates that I have on Eastern Pro. These are some of the files and all of it is cluttered. These are blog themes or templates, but yeah, you get the point. These are thumbnails from Eastern and you'll see some of the SVGs here also because it is easier for me to just draw lines here on frame in Figma and export as SVG that I can later animate through motion, which I'll talk about later. And this is the only design tool that I use and I use it rarely except for thumbnails or, you know, creating SVGs, uh, creating lines and exporting as SVGs and quick thumbnails design here and there. This is the first tool that I use. Fairly easy, fairly simple to navigate. It will take you hardly one tutorial video for you to get familiar with Figma. I do not use it much, but still an essential part of my workflow. Cool. Moving on to the next one, the next tool, and this is the development toolkit that I have. This is the text tag that I use for creating components or designs in general. First is Next.js or React. Now Next.js, if you're not familiar, is a framework of React for creating web application with server rendering, you know, incremental static regeneration, all the good features, caching, etc. You get all the benefits. Next.js is one of the frameworks that I use along with React. Now React, I use separate along with wheat as well because that is also a great option to work with next yes i use more because i'm more familiar with it i'm faster with it i can create landings and you know web applications with it much faster than any other framework for example uh, swelt kit or any other which i'm not that familiar with so if you're familiar with any tech stack i use next yes you can use any framework or a library or even vanilla html css if that's your thing but that is what i use secondly i use tailwind for styling now i'm very bullish on tailwind css because it is a framework for CSS or a library or collection of utility classes for you to ship faster looking UIs. Now, faster is relatively dependent upon the person who is building it, but I'm very fast with uh, when it comes to Tailwind and, you know, designing and prototyping with Tailwind. So if you give me a design, I'll be able to build it faster with Tailwind and React rather than designing it in Figma. And since I'm a design engineer, that's what I do. I build things for people to take a look at and give me feedback. If I were working in a company, Company, my job would be to, you know, create prototypes and push it to production from day one. So that is what I use for styling. And the third thing that I use is again a part of this CSS ecosystem, which is Shad CN UI and Eternity UI, mostly around the pro part because I do a lot of client work. So now I've got a team working with me. I use Shad CN UI a lot and I use Eternity UI pro components a lot. That helps me build landing pages faster. And if there is a dashboard associated, if it is a web app that I'm working with, I use Shad add CNUI a lot and since they have got a comprehensive distribution system it is fairly easy for me to you know ship faster and ship at a lighting speed actually because there are a lot of components that I reuse for example if I go to shadcn.com if I go to combo box I use this component a lot because this you can find everywhere I use drop down menus a lot again the same component I use nav bars a lot I use this a lot because this is a crazy good component nav bars you use ultimately everywhere and you can style it as you like right you have the code with you I use these components components a lot and once we have it I top it up with a pro which is pro dot a for example if I need a bento grid item I can go to component blocks or get a bento grid block for example maybe this one and I can change the images change the styling here and there a bit and it adds to my workflow makes me ship faster cool the last thing that I use is the most important thing in my workflow is called motion for react now if you go to motion dot react or motion dot dev which is motion for react this is an animation library that I use quite often now this is for animating jsx or js or html elements 
or basically having animations or micro interactions onto your websites. I've made an entire playlist onto it. What are uh, micro interactions and how you can animate things onto a web page with Framer Motion, which was previously Framer Motion. Now it is Motion for React. There are a lot of things that you can do. For example, if you go to their doc section, they've got comprehensive documentation of how you can animate things in real time. And this is what you can do with Motion for React. Fairly simple API structure, fairly simple, easy to use straight up. You can go to the website, read a bit of documentation and start implementing from the ground up. Really simple APIs to use. And they've got tons of free examples for you to look at. If you go to examples, now I've got the pro version, but you might not have it you might have it if you go to the free version as well they've got excellent tutorials for you to check out and once you click on it for example switch you can see the source code here and you will get to know how they've implemented now they use styled components for it you don't have to use it you can do it with vanilla css as well or you know you can use tailwind but the underlying structure remains the same which is this motion props you pass these motion props and you know get your way around animating things i've got a dedicated playlist on both tailwind and motion for react so i recommend for you to check it out this was the tech stack that i use generally for building my components or building my code, pushing my code to production. This is the tech stack that I use primarily. Now it can vary from client to client, but this is generally what I use for H20 Pro, H20 UI or any other client project that I have. Awesome. Moving on to the third part of the video, which is the productivity stack or the workflow that I have. Now the workflow I try to keep generally simple. To be honest, I use Apple Notes to track my progress, but Apple Notes, sometimes it's not enough. If I'm collaborating within a team i require access to multiple people collaborating on a same document but initially i started off with apple notes to just write down my tasks i keep it very simple i do not try to over complicate things i do not use notion i do not use obsidian i do not use any sort of mind mapping tool i just go ahead with apple notes the other thing that i use is linear linear is for tracking tasks and projects now this i use because i work with a team i have people assigned tasks i have people assigned i mean i have ashi issues my product manager he assigns tasks to me as well that i work on now linear is something that i use almost daily i can show you the board that i have but they have got an excellent landing page by the way but it essentially is a project management tool sort of like jira but it is more user friendly and it is easy on the eyes it has all the features that i want i can just you know create a ticket on my phone onto my slack so all these things are there by default so it's linear to track projects write down a bit of tasks so i can move around you know in to do or move around to in progress or you know keep them in cancelled or completed state this is getting done by linear now this is a tool that i pay for i use i'm happy with and i really recommend everyone to use their free version it is a great tool uh, again for project tracking and for general purpose you know productivity enhancement third thing that i use for coding again is called cursor or you can also use wind surf but i use cursor more a great tool uh, you can you know have tab completions you know the drill around cursor i need i don't need to beat the bush what is cursor why is cursor you already know what cursor is i use it for shipping things at a faster pace now i use ai a lot i do not recommend everyone to use it for freshers at least but if you use it use it taste Fully use it i can it can you know enhance your workflow 10 times you can ship things faster at a rate that you cannot even imagine cursor helps me do that and this is a code editor that i use a lot of people ask me what theme did i use it's called oscura theme by Faye, and i use that theme and also i use bearded theme by arc these two themes i use for cursor and the last thing that i use is for productivity and it is a quality of life improvement it's called raycast now it is for mac i'm not sure if it is for windows but it is for mac it is a command space utility that i use all the time for example 400 into 42 you know if i need to create a linear ticket i can do it from here if i need to create ping someone on slack i can do it from here if i need to generate a paragraph i can just hit lorem and generate four paragraph for example slash lorem generate paragraphs copy to clipboard paste and it goes here you see that is how easy it is for you to recast it replaces spotlight into your uh, mac terminal or macintosh or macbooks and recast takes into place with command space you get the point cool these were the uh sort of productivity tools that i use now nothing of it is hard and fast i use it on a daily basis so i'm not really looking for a change in this mostly this is the meaty part this is just to support the work that i do last and the final part is the design inspiration that i take from the best design inspiration that i can get from is twitter obviously because i'm 
on Twitter 24 by 7. It is there on my phone. It is there on my Windows machine. It's there on my MacBook. Everywhere I go, I see X. So X is a place where I get my design inspirations from. I follow a lot of great design engineers and designers out there. For example, if I scroll, uh, not this. Uh, but you'll see a lot of uh, design engineering people that I follow from X and they help me achieve a good design taste. I see their designs. I try to replicate them. I try to talk to them to tap into their brain about how they're thinking. I listen to their podcasts, for example, Syntax FM. Syntax FM is one of the podcasts that I listen to. Syntax FM is by West Boss and Steve. Uh, again, great, great podcast. They teach a lot of great things, great snippets. I mean, there are so many nuggets that I've uh, understood by just listening to what they talk about. For example, I understood in depth how we can use after at a lot of places in CSS. They've got a great podcast. Second thing I use is Dribble. Now Dribble with a triple B is a place where designer posts their work. Now this is a great place for you to, you know, actually look at a lot of great design inspirations. You can go ahead and check a lot of designs by great designers and you can try replicating their work and see if you're interested. Third that I really like is UI8.net now it is a marketplace actually but again great source of inspiration great source of a, a lot of content out there i really love with the bento great examples that they have ui8 is an all-time personal favorite and lastly i use mobin.design now this is a relatively new website that you can you know go to and discover specific workflows of entire applications for example if you go to uber or or, or you want to see any finance related website you'll be able to see all their drill down pages for example, if you search for sign-in pages, you'll see sign-in pages for Uber, Stripe, you know, Sony cameras, Sure mics. You'll get everyone's sign-in pages separately and you can study from there. This is again a great resource for you to take design inspirations from. All in all, this is my best bet. Follow great people on Twitter and you can always always get inspired from and you know you can stay in touch with what are the latest trends in the industry and you'll be able to make a lot of progress just by looking at other people's work and following their journey from the ground up awesome so these are my design and workflow tools and tips that i use every day so do drop in your comments and suggestions about what you use in your daily life and what has helped you increase your productivity over the years and i'll be happy to you know talk about it more and which can even help me in the future as well who knows and thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Tab tak ke liye bhai jai Hind. Bahut kam karo, bahut padhai karo, bahut mehnat karo. Aage milta hoon.